Burj Khalifa, Burj Al Arab, CN Tower of Canada, Shanghai Tower, and whatnot. Mankind now sits at the epitome of architectural success. But it didn't come without any disasters. It was a slow revolution that took ages. And not only that, it took blood, sweat, finances, and even lives of many for us to get where we stand today. Having said that, this groundbreaking documentary will take you back in time to discuss our failures as we go over some of the most devastating building collapses in recorded history. In the year AD 27, a tragedy of immense proportions struck the ancient town of Fidenae, located in what is now modern-day Italy. A once thriving community was left reeling as the amphitheater, a focal point of the town, collapsed in a devastating event. The amphitheater was built to hold up 50,000 spectators. The driving force behind the building's construction was a man named Attilius. He significantly cut corners on expenses, neglecting to ensure the structure was adequately sturdy and well-built. More than 20,000 people were killed in this massacre, and tens of thousands were injured. The high number of victims can also be attributed to Tiberius's prior prohibition of gladiator fights. When the ban was eventually lifted, there was an overwhelming demand for this form of entertainment, leading to a massive influx of people into Fidenae effectively laying siege to the city and resulting in the tragic loss of many lives. As a direct consequence, Attilius was sentenced to exile, and the Senate banned the people with assets less than 400,000 sesterces from organizing gladiatorial fights. And yet the griefs of 27 AD were revisited again. It was 140 AD when another sporting venue met a similar fate. Constructed in the 6th century BCE, the notorious Circus Maximus was an ancient Roman chariot racing stadium that could accommodate 150,000 spectators. They gathered to witness the Roman games, gladiator battles, and eventually the races themselves. The site met a major disaster that killed almost 13,000 people. It all happened when the upper tier of the circus collapsed unleashing a torrent of splintered wood and shattered stone upon the terrified spectators below. When researching for the impetus, we found out that before the accident, Rome had a lot of rain, which made the ground weak. The building also wasn't taken care of very well, so the Circus Maximus was in danger without anyone even realizing it. And the rest is history. As the sands of time swept across centuries, bridging the ancient world to the bustling era of the 1800s, an incident thousands of kilometers away from Europe captured the world's attention. Here is what the Atai Bridge looks like today, and it looked like this back when it was being built. However, back in 1807, this happened, and nearly 1,500 people drowned as well. During the Edo period, the bridge stood roughly 100 meters upstream from its present-day location. Constructed in either 1696 or 1698, the bridge replaced a ferry known as Fukugawa no Washi that previously served the area. The collapse happened when the bridge got overcrowded due to a festival. On May 31st, 1889, a catastrophic event took place in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. The disaster occurred when a 450-acre man-made lake owned by the South Fork Fishing and Hunting Club burst through its 50-year-old eastern dam. In just 40 minutes, the entire lake emptied with the force of the Niagara River. The water and debris raced down the South Fork Creek into the Little Connemaw River on its way to Johnstown, 15 miles downstream. The water hit Johnstown at speeds sometimes more than 40 miles an hour, and with a roiling wall of water and debris at times more than 70 feet high. It uprooted massive trees, shattered man-made structures, and pushed tons of soil, rocks, and boulders along its way. It descended some 500 feet in the 15-mile race to Johnstown. The official death toll ultimately was fixed at 2,209 people, with one-third of the corpses never identified, and hundreds of missing never recovered. 99 whole families perished. 396 children aged 10 or less died. 98 children lost both parents. 124 women were left widows and 198 men were made widowers. It took five years to rebuild the town, 
The tragedy became known as the Johnstown Flood, and it remained one of the deadliest disasters in American history. And just two years down the road, mankind met another disaster. The world felt the reckoning of the soils of Portugal when another bridge collapsed. In 1809, a calamitous occurrence unfolded as French forces besieged the city of Porto. Over 4,500 desperate individuals sought to traverse a bridge unequipped to bear such a massive load. And ultimately, the structure gave way, resulting in numerous fatalities. Compounding the tragedy, those fleeing the advancing French troops faced a harrowing choice. Plunge into the Dora River or face the invaders. This catastrophic event claimed at least 4,000 lives and stands as the most devastating bridge collapse in recorded history. Today in Porto, Portugal, six bridges stand as striking architectural landmarks within the region, attracting numerous visitors. The renowned Six Bridges Tour offers a boat excursion that navigates the Douro River, providing an up-close experience of these remarkable structures. And so far we have investigated some of the historic collapses that date centuries back, but now it's time to discuss an event that happened in the wake of the 20th century of all time. On March 12, 2023, it was the 95th anniversary of the 1928 St. Francis Dam disaster. It was an event that stands as the second most catastrophic event in California's history. The tragedy claimed the lives of at least 600 individuals, with the possibility of an even higher death toll. The collapse can be attributed to multiple factors, including design flaws, poor construction, and geological issues. The dam was designed and constructed by William Mulholland, who was a self-taught engineer with limited formal training. The dam was built on unstable and porous rock formations, which eroded over time due to water seepage, weakening the dam's overall structure. Additionally, the dam's design failed to account for the uplift pressure exerted by the water it held back further destabilizing the structure. The recollection of this event brings me to another dam collapse, and for that, we will have to revisit the European landscape again. And just to keep you on your toes, this disaster is sometimes described as the deadliest man-made natural disaster. In the heart of the Viont Valley, a vast basin sculpted by ancient glaciers lies hidden above a narrow, mysterious gorge carved by the relentless flow of the Vion River. This unique landscape, combined with the proximity of industrial powerhouses, created an irresistible opportunity for an ambitious project. By 1960, the world's highest double curvature arch dam towered above the valley floor, stretching 261.6 meters into the sky and spanning 190 meters across the top. This colossal structure held the potential to contain a staggering 150 to 168 million cubic meters of water, fueling a hydroelectric power station that would forever change the fate of the valley. It only took three years for this dam to meet its unfortunate fate. October 9th, 1963. A massive landslide sent approximately 260 million cubic meters of rock and earth crashing into the reservoir. The colossal impact generated an enormous wave that overtopped the dam, unleashing a torrent of water into the valley below. The tragedy claimed the lives of an estimated 2,000 people as the devastating flood swept through the villages of Rongarone, Pirago, Rivalta, Villanova, and Faye. As we explore the haunting tales of historic building collapses, we are reminded of humanity's vulnerability to nature's fury and our own engineering missteps. Transitioning from the tragic Viont Dam disaster, we now shift our focus to another incident that similarly resonates with devastation and loss. It's none other than the massacre of the Sam Pung department store. The Sam Pung department store was once a symbol of modernization and prosperity in the bustling city of Seoul, South Korea. However, on June 29, 1995, it became the site of one of the deadliest structural failures in history. The mall, which was constructed in the early 1990s, boasted a luxurious interior, complete with a cinema, skating rink, and sauna. It was a popular shopping destination for both locals and tourists, 
attracting as many as 40,000 visitors every day. But despite its grandeur, the Sampung department store had a dark secret. The building's structural integrity was compromised due to a series of modifications made by the owners and the contractors. The modifications included adding extra floors and removing support columns to create larger open spaces for retail displays. On that fateful June day, shoppers and employees were going about their daily routines when the unthinkable happened. In the end, the collapse of the Sampung department store claimed the lives of 502 people and injured nearly 1,500 more. It was a tragedy that shook South Korea to its core and highlighted the importance of proper building codes, regulations, and safety standards. And now it's time to travel back in time because we surely don't want to miss out on an incident that contributed to over 100,000 deaths and left many more injured. The Banqiao and Ximantan dams were two of the largest dams in China, constructed in the 1950s and 70s respectively. These dams were designed to control flooding and generate electricity for the rapidly growing nation. However, they were also the site of one of the worst man-made disasters in history. In August 1975, the dams faced heavy rains and floods that exceeded their capacity. The resulting pressure caused the dams to collapse, unleashing a catastrophic flood that devastated the surrounding areas. The flood waters swept away homes, bridges, and entire towns, leaving behind a trail of death and destruction. The death toll from the disaster was estimated to be between 171,000 and 240,000 people, with an additional 11 million left homeless. Many were injured or suffered from long-term health effects due to exposure to contaminated water and lack of medical care. The disaster was caused by a combination of factors, including poor design, inadequate maintenance, and insufficient warning systems. Additionally, local authorities had ignored warnings from engineers about the risks posed by the dams. We now live in the era of modernization, but that in no way means that we are safe from calamities. Yes, the safety standards have improved, but there is still a lot of risk. Time can be merciless. Lagos, a rapidly growing city, is no stranger to the challenges of urbanization. Rapid development and a booming population have strained its infrastructure. In this case, the high-rise building, once a symbol of progress, became an emblem of disaster. The cause of the collapse was traced back to substandard construction materials and lax oversight. In a rush to accommodate the sitting swelling population, corners were cut and critical safety measures were overlooked. As a result, the building's structural integrity was compromised leading to the catastrophic failure that left many in mourning. The Lagos high-rise collapse claimed the lives of over 200 people while leaving countless others injured and homeless. And with that, the story of devastation comes to an end. And as you know, researching and producing such content like this takes a lot of time and effort, so be sure to subscribe.